speed profiling is the process of making sure that the particular throttle position results in the same accurate scale speed for all locomotives on the roster. In today's video, I use an Arduino-based command station along with the purple head sensor to create a perfect setup for speed profiling an entire fleet at a rate of about one minute per locomotive. Welcome to the IOTT channel, I am Hans Tanner. A special welcome to all new subscribers and welcome back to everyone else. I'm happy you made it here. Here is what I'm going to show you in this video. First, we assemble a simple command station and connect it to Decoder Pro using USB. Then, we set up the purple head sensor measuring car. Next, we, we prepare a decoder and run the speed magic function to profile the locomotive and program the speed tables. And finally, I show you an alternative and even more comfortable method for doing the same but without the need for a computer running Decoder Pro. Plenty of topics to cover, so let's get started. Setting up the command station is simple and straightforward. Take an Arduino Uno or Mega, stack up a DCC AUX shield and a standard Arduino motor shield on top of the stack. Then connect output port B of the motor shield to your profiling track. It is best to use a flat and straight section of track, about 4 feet long for N scale and about 6 to 8 feet for HO scale. Next, install the DCCX software on your Arduino. For this simple and standardized setup, you can use the installer program provided on the DCCX webpage. Select Arduino Motor Shield as your motor driver and install the software. Now connect a DC power supply to the stack. Thanks to using the DCC aux shield, there is no need for using different power supplies for track voltage and Arduino supply voltage if the track voltage is not higher than about 18 volts. Therefore, select a power supply with the same voltage you will be using on your layout, as the voltage impacts the speed of the locomotive at any given speed step. Connect the power supply either to the battle checks of the Arduino or the DCC AUX shield or to the power input of the motor shield. To play it safe, you might want to use the battle check of the DCC AUX shield as it is the only input on the stack that offers reverse polarity protection. If you use the other two inputs and mess up the polarity, you might damage the boards. As soon as you connect power, some LEDs will come up, indicating that the stack is powered. Next, connect the USB port of your PC to the Arduino stack and start Decoder Pro. In the Preferences screen of Decoder Pro, select DCCX as command station and choose the serial port it is connected to. You can now open the communication window and enter the one join command which will put the programming track in dual mode, meaning that you can use it for both programming and running a locomotive, so you can run a profile analysis of the locomotive and then program the speed tables without having to place the locomotive on a different track. If everything works, you should see the four track indicator LEDs on the motor shield come on. 
This shows your command station is ready and working. As last step in the Decoder Pro setup, we activate the Viceroutle server as we are going to use it for the communication between the Purple Head sensor and Decoder Pro. Now it is time to set up the profile measuring using the Purple Head sensor, which is a magnetic sensor to measure the travel distance with high resolution and accuracy based on the rotation of the axle. Watch some of the videos in the Purple Head playlist for more information. For this setup on an HO car, I choose the flat mount version of the sensor. The magnets are installed on the axle and the sensor board along with the IOTT stick is placed on the flatbed of the car. Really simple. In the IOTT stick setup, I choose Purple Head as head device and Vice Rotle client as command source. In the Vice Rotle client setup, I enter the IP address of the Decoder Pro computer, which is displayed on the Decoder Pro Vice Rotle server window. And as port number, I set the same as defined in the Decoder Pro Vice Rotle server setup. Then I open the Purple Head setup tab and enter the technical data for the sensor. The distance measurement is done based on the axle rotation, so it is important to enter the wheel diameter as precisely as possible. I typically measure the diameter in the middle of the conical rolling surface of the wheel and aim for an accuracy of one tenth of a millimeter. The scale drop down is used to tell the sensor how to calculate real world speed based on the model speed, so it is important to set this correct as well. And the final really important entry is the sensor orientation, either flat or vertical, depending on how the sensor is mounted on the measuring car. With that, the hardware setup is complete and we are almost ready to roll. Now, Decoder Pro maintains a locomotive roster, which is the same file that is also used in JMRI. So the first step is to create a roster entry for the locomotive we want to program. This roster entry basically has all the data that is relevant for the locomotive, including the CB values that are programmed into the decoder. So if we ever need to reprogramming the decoder, we can do it using the data in the roster file, which is very convenient. Decoder Pro has some fun functionality to read the decoder brand and type from the locomotive, which helps setting up the roster entry. It is also a good idea to do an initial readout of all CV values for a new locomotive. To do so, click the Read All Sheets button on the programmer screen. It might take a while, but it is also a perfect verification that the programming track works as intended. At this point, we can also prepare the decoder for the profile analysis. The first element is setting the acceleration and deceleration delays to the lowest delay value possible, typically zero. These settings cause the decoder to react immediately if a new speed step is set which reduces the distance and time needed for analyzing the speed profile. Second, if the decoder offers speed stabilization, so constant locomotive speed when the load is changing, this feature should be set to the same value you plan on using during normal operation, enabled if you plan to use it, and disabled if you don't plan to use it. And third, set the decoder to use a linear speed curve for the measurement. This can be achieved by programming a linear speed table or by setting the values for starting voltage, medium and maximum speed. Some decoders allow these settings to be zero for a linear behavior. Other decoders require values of zero, 128 and 255 for a linear curve. Have a look at the manual of your decoder to get the correct settings. When done, save the data in the roster file and make note of the file name and its location on your computer. Next, switch to the Purple Hat web page and open the Speedmagic tab. Click the Load JMRI file button and load the roster file of the locomotive you want to program. 
Speedmagic will load the CV data from the file and initialize communication to the locomotive via Weisrodel. If this is successful, the locomotive address is now listed in the Weisrodel viewer of Decoder Pro, along with the roster ID. On the purple head screen, some data from the roster file is displayed as well, among others, the current values of selected CVs that are important for speed profiling. The goal of speed profiling, as mentioned, is to make sure that any given throttle position results in an accurate identical scale speed for each locomotive. This helps for realistic operation and reduces problems when setting up consists. In a nutshell, speed profiling is a two-step process. First, we need to determine what throttle position should result in what scale speed. And second, we need to set the decoder speed table to match the required scale speed for each commanded speed step. This two-step process is the method used in the speed magic tab. The first section is used to define the throttle profile, so the relationship between throttle position and scale speed. First, Define the maximum scale speed and the number of throttle positions your profile should include. Then you can use the mouse to manipulate the curve by moving the points on the screen, you can add points by clicking near the curve, and you can remove data points by holding the control key while clicking on them. When done, save the profile in a file so you can use it again. In the second step, we need to analyze the speed curve of the locomotive. For that, we place it on the track and hook up the measuring car. It does not matter where exactly you place the locomotive, it just should be somewhere at the beginning of the test track and the locomotive needs to be set to drive towards the other end. It's best to keep the headlights on so that you can see the travel direction of the locomotive. If you need to change the settings, you can open a throttle window in Decoder Pro, assign the locomotive address and change the settings. You can even drive the locomotive on the programming track thanks to the join mode we used for the track power. You can also define the track length Speedmagic is allowed to use for testing and if needed you can change the maximum scale speed for the test. Furthermore, you can determine whether Speedmagic should test all 128 speed steps or go with the much faster 28 speed step test, which normally produces pretty accurate results. When done with these settings, click Start Test and watch Speedmagic doing its thing. The locomotive will start moving forward at an increasing speed. Then slow down and stop at the end of the test track length, reverse direction and repeat the process on the way back. If the test track was too short to test all speed steps, it will repeat the process going back and forth until all speed steps have been tested. While this process is going on, you will see the measured speed curves displayed in the browser window. When done, Speedmagic will automatically calculate the resulting speed table settings and show them in the curve display in the next section. It also calculates the necessary trim values for forward and backward movements. In the settings, you need to indicate whether the decoder interprets the trim value range as 0 to 100% or 0 to 200%. 0 to 100% means a trim value of 255 is no change and everything lower than that slows down the resulting speed proportionally. 0 to 200% on the other hand means that a value of 128 is neutral, larger values increase, lower values decrease the calculated speed. Check your decoder manual to find out what the correct value is. When in doubt, Try with 0 to 200% as this is the NMRA standard interpretation of trim values. If you want to change the trim value settings, you can do it even after measuring the speed curve. 
Simply adjust the settings and click on Recalculate to adjust the speed table values to the new settings. The last step in the process is writing the speed table values to the decoder. Unfortunately, at this time there is no way to do this directly when using the Weisrottle connection as it does not support CV programming. So what we need to do is saving the table settings in a decoder profile first and then program the decoder using Decoder Pro. Click the Save Chain or iFile button to store the data back to the roster. You can replace the previous file or store the new settings in a separate file. Then go back to Decoder Pro and load the newly created file. Click the Speed Table tab to see the new speed table, then click on Write Full Sheet to do both program the speed table and activate it. That's it. Your locomotive now has a defined speed profile and the scale speed of a particular speed step is predictable. You now can repeat the process for the other locomotives to speed profile your entire fleet. Now, while the speed profiling process is quite simple and fast, it unfortunately is not a fully integrated workflow, as the speed table data has to be saved in a decoder profile before it can be programmed. Would it not be much more elegant if the speed table could be programmed directly from the purple head screen? Well, this is possible if we use the Locknet over TCP protocol instead of Weisrottle. Let me show you what is needed to make it work. First, we need to change the configuration of the Arduino stack. We swap the motor shield and the DCC aux shield so that the DCC aux shield is on top of the stack. Then we add an IoTT stick to the DCC aux shield which basically converts the Arduino stack into a Loconet command station even though there is no wired Loconet socket and it therefore only works via Wi-Fi. The USB connection from the computer running Decoder Pro is no longer functional in this configuration and should be disconnected. In the configuration settings of this second IoTT stick, we select Loconet Loop Back as command source and Red Hat Shield as head device. Then activate the Loconet LP Server option in the Server section. On the purple head IoTT stick, we change the command source from Weisrottle to Loconet LB Server Client. And in the LNTCP Client tab, we enter the IP address and port number of the command station. If you want to continue to use Decoder Pro and the JMRI roster files, you change the Decoder Pro connection settings from TCC++ to Loconet over TCP and enter the IP address of the stick on the Arduino stack. Decoder Pro and Purple Hat are now both connected via Loconet over TCP to the LB server of the Arduino stack and you can operate the programming track just as before. You now go back to the Speed Magic tab to do the speed profiling. If you want, you still can load a JMRI roster file and I actually would recommend doing so, but you no longer have to. As before, set the throttle profile and run the speed curve analysis to get the speed curves. When done, Speedmagic will calculate and display the speed table and trim values. But here comes the difference. Instead of saving the values to a JMRI file and use Decoder Pro for programming, you can simply click the Write CV button and the speed table values will be programmed into your decoder. Just like that. You still can save the data in a JMRI file as before, but again, you do not have to. If desired, you can run the entire speed profiling process without JMRI and Decoder Pro and save time thanks to the better integration of the process flow. And that's it for this video. I hope this information was useful or at least interesting for you and it gave you some ideas for setting up your own speed profiling station. If so, please click the like button below to let me know.
Every like helps to promote this video and the IOTT channel in general, as it motivates YouTube to suggest this video to other model railroaders. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.